This is the International Space Station, and it may not look like it's moving very quickly, but it's actually moving at 17,100 miles per hour. Or in other words, it's moving at 4.76 miles every single second. Most of us have heard about the International Space Station, but have you ever taken a moment to really think about how a 40 million pound object is moving at 17,100 miles per hour, seemingly without effort? So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how the International Space Station and thousands of satellites that orbit the Earth are able to stay up there without raining on us like fire and brimstone. So the very first thing you have to understand when we're talking about orbital mechanics is gravity. Ironically enough, the thing that keeps us grounded to the Earth is also the thing that enables these satellites to stay orbiting the Earth. Gravity pulls on all objects with the same acceleration. For example, if you're at sea level, gravity pulls at you at 9.81 meters per second squared, or 32.2 feet per second squared. But as we increase our distance from the center of the Earth, we also decrease the force of gravity on us. As you can see in this formula, as we increase the value of d, or the distance from us to the center of the Earth, we also decrease the force that gravity is able to act upon us. For example, if you were to climb a mountain, you would actually be lighter when you got to the top of it. So if we couple this knowledge with what we know about classic Newtonian physics, we can begin to understand what Newton was thinking with his classic thought experiment concerning the cannonball and the mountaintop. We know that if we shoot a cannonball out of a cannon, it's gonna move in this classic arc trajectory. Well, let's suppose for a second that we put this cannon on a ridiculously tall mountain. So if we take this ridiculously tall mountain on top of the earth, and we shoot a cannonball off of it, like we would in a normal cannon, it's actually gonna fall even farther because it now has the curvature of the Earth to pull it down the other side of the Earth, like this. Not only that, but because we're on a ridiculously high mountain, the cannonball will actually be lighter. Now let's say that we've souped up this cannon at the top of this ridiculously high mountain in order for it to shoot the cannon at 17,900 miles an hour or 8,000 meters per second. Because we're able to shoot this cannonball at such a ridiculous speed, it's gonna go all the way down on the other side of the Earth before gravity even has time to pull it down to the surface of the Earth. Then when it reaches the bottom of the Earth, gravity actually slingshots that cannonball back up and we begin what's known as an orbit. And due to the fact that this cannonball was shot from such a great height, it also doesn't slow down due to air resistance. So in other words, it could perpetually orbit the Earth. And just like that, you have a satellite orbiting the Earth. A satellite is technically anything that orbits a celestial body. For instance, the Earth is a satellite of the Sun, and the Moon is a satellite of the Earth. It's also important to note that the lower your orbit, or in other words, the shorter the distance between your satellite and the center of the Earth, the faster you have to go to overcompensate for that increased gravity which is exactly why the International Space Station has to travel at more than 17,000 miles per hour. And if you were paying close attention to Newton's cannonball thought experiment, you'll notice that I said that the cannonball is still under the influence of Earth's gravity. But if you've ever watched any footage inside the International Space Station, you'll notice that the astronauts are in what appears to be zero G, or zero gravity. Well, to be more specific, they're actually in microgravity, not zero gravity. But in fact, at that orbit, and given the distance from the center of the Earth to the International Space Station, those astronauts should be experiencing 91% of Earth's gravity still. So why is it that they are weightless? Contrary to popular misconceptions, there's actually no invisible barrier between Earth's gravitational influence and zero gravity space. And as I mentioned earlier, gravitational forces only decrease as this equation dictates. So then why is it that the astronauts aboard the ISS don't experience 91% of Earth's gravity, but instead experience microgravity? The answer is the same reason that the characters in the movie Inception experience weightlessness when the van drives off of the bridge. When you're in free fall, your body actually feels weightless. This is due to the fact that gravity is the only force acting on you and there's no reaction force pushing in the opposite direction. 
And it's for this reason that Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character is able to experience weightlessness. But let's say you're a little crazy and you want to leave Earth and you want to colonize Mars. For that, there's the second type of orbit, an open orbit. In order to accomplish an open orbit, you have to reach what's known as escape velocity. Or in other words, the speed at which is required to leave the influence of Earth's gravity. Escape velocity is around 11.2 kilometers per second, or about 25,000 miles per hour. So if we go back to Newton's thought experiment for a second, we know that if we shoot a cannonball at 25,000 miles an hour, it's gonna go and be slightly influenced by Earth's gravity, but it's not gonna have enough time to influence it enough to slingshot it back around. So instead, it's gonna shoot off and skip off into space. But to get to Mars, it's gonna require a little more knowledge of orbital mechanics, which I will definitely include in a future video. But in my next video, I'm gonna to explain to you the three different types of orbits that exist around the Earth. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified for when my next video comes out. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.